How's it going everybody? Thank you for checking my channel and welcome to today's video. Today is an important day for me because I finally was able to upgrade my SSD in my 13 inch Retina Display MacBook Pro mid 2014. As a content creator, I have always felt that the storage space that came with my computer, which I think was at 256 gigabytes, was nowhere near enough. So finally went out and actually bought myself a one terabyte SSD and it is from the brand Data RAM. For any of you guys that have the same type of model computer as me, I'll make sure to put the link for this from Amazon down in the description below. It is not an affiliate link. I'm not sponsored to do this. I'm simply just trying to help anybody out that has the same type of computer as me that wants to do the same thing I did, which is to upgrade their storage space so that way they can have a lot more opportunities and a lot better performance from the computer, especially if you are getting the messages of startup disk is starting to get full or it does become full. A couple of key things before we actually get into the video. For you guys that are gonna be swapping out your SSDs, no matter what model of computer it is, please make sure to do your research, as much research as you see fit to make sure that you guys are not getting the wrong part and that you are getting something that actually will be able to format to your computer. For any of you guys that wanna know what the actual model is, on the very back of your SSD, there are two barcodes. On the very top of it should have a model number. Take this model number, type this into any kind of search or wherever it is that you're considering buying your SSD from and try to find the SSD that's gonna fit to your computer as far as all of the specs are concerned. Whether it be the size, the performance, whatever the case is, you wanna make sure that you have everything that is gonna be perfect for your computer because the one thing that I would hate to know is that somebody watches this video and goes and buys the exact part that I used for my computer that might not actually work for theirs. They try to switch everything out Next thing you know, their computer is not gonna be running to the maximum performance or even just running at all. When it comes to the ratings, don't just trust that it's a 4.5 or a five out of five. Make sure that you go to the Q and A section, especially if it's on something like Amazon and also the reviews to make sure that it is gonna be something that actually fits your computer because chances are other people have asked the questions that you're probably gonna be asking, especially if it's gonna be formatted to your type of computer. Make sure that you do as much research as you see fit so that way you know that it can actually be formatted to your computer so that way you can get the best performance out of your SSD as possible. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Before you continue, back your computer up in a time machine so that you can restore it once your new SSD is installed. Do not forget to back up your computer. Make sure your MacBook is turned off, not in sleep mode, but completely turned off. There are 10 screws in total to take out to release the back cover. Using a P5 screwdriver or a bit, start to take off the back cover of your computer. Keep the screws you take off organized for easy access to where they go back in later. Do not use a drill to be able to take out the screws. Keep in mind that the top two center screws are shorter than the rest and need to go back into those specific spots. Once all of the screws are removed, the back cover should be able to be removed with little to no resistance, possibly needing your fingernail to catch one of the edges to lift up and remove at most. Now that the back cover is removed, depending on how old it is and the usage that it's seen throughout the years, you may see dust buildup in the inside of your cover and within the internal components of your computer. Be careful and delicate when removing the dust, as it can be very easy to disconnect something or possibly cut and or damage something if using a tool. It is important to make sure to disconnect the battery before continuing on. Lift up the plug-in connector. This may take a few tries depending on how old your computer is and how much you've used it. Either bend up the connector, don't worry, this will not damage it, or place something such as a small piece of paper under the connector to not have any possibility of current flow from the battery to the computer and you possibly get shocked or short anything out within your computer. Now we're gonna be removing the screw holding your old SSD in place within your computer. Take a Torx T5 screwdriver or bit and remove the screw. Once the screw is removed, you can lift up the SSD and remove it as well. It may take moving the SSD side to side a few times to loosen it up and remove completely. Now take your new SSD and insert it where the previous one went. You don't have to be gentle when placing it into the computer. However, nothing more than light pressure and the same side-to-side -side motion should be necessary. From here, it's just a reverse order of how you took everything apart. Put back the Torx T5 screw to hold the SSD to the computer. Make sure to reconnect the battery. Place the cover back over the computer, keeping in mind that the two smaller screws need to go back into the top two center spots. Thank you. 
Now you're going to put your computer into recovery mode by pushing and holding Command, Control, and R while powering on your computer until either the spinning globe symbol comes up or the Apple logo appears. The loading will take time to get to the next screen, so be patient as your computer loads everything needed to help finalize the last few steps. Recovering your computer will take Wi-Fi to do so, so make sure that you are connected, especially if you're going to start from scratch and install the latest Mac OS versus restoring through Time Machine. There's a few ways to continue on. Either install a new Mac OS or use Time Machine. I've seen some immediately go to the disk utility and erase their new SSD cards to format it to their computer. If you choose to do this at this point, follow the on-screen instructions by clicking the SSD, go to the top of the screen, go over to the right and click erase. If you're having trouble seeing your SSD or you feel that it isn't recognized, check the card in the corner for a quick, easy fix that could bring your SSD up and save you hundreds versus having a computer tech fix this for you. Hopefully this would be enough to solve that problem for you. If you choose to install a new Mac OS, click the icon and follow the on-screen instructions. This should be a very easy process. However, doing this means that your computer is wiped of anything it had previously on it. If you choose to use Time Machine as I did, click Restore from Time Machine. On the next screen, click Continue, and the following screen will ask you for your backup source. This will be when you can plug in your Time Machine external drive, if you haven't already done so. Once it pops up on your screen, click the Time Machine, then click the latest update as they are in chronological order, and from there, it'll ask you to select a destination. Click the destination where your new SSD is, as the top option should be your time machine. This is where your computer otherwise would tell you that it's going to erase your new SSD to be able to be formatted to be able to restore everything from your time machine, if you haven't already erased your SSD prior to this. From there, your computer will need time to fully restore with the new upgraded SSD. Understand that the file sizes you have on your time machine can make a huge difference in how long this process will take. For example, if you have 20 gigabytes as one singular file, this will take longer to restore compared to 20 gigabytes broken up amongst several different files. Once your Mac is restored, it will have you log back in to your computer. From there, you should see the desktop look identical to how it was prior to upgrading your SSD. All of your apps, files, everything you had prior will be exactly as it was. Now to check your SSD storage, go to the Apple icon on the top left. Click About This Mac, and once the new screen comes up, Go over to your storage to verify your new storage space is now what it's upgraded to. In this case, one terabyte. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was able to help you. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to know when I'll be uploading next. And new video suggestions are always welcome. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and take care.